everyone, welcome to another webisode of Date Night. I'm Andrea. And I'm David. We're going to take you on an adventure we had in a little town called Washington, Virginia, which is about an hour and 45 minute drive outside of Washington, D.C. We have wanted to go to this restaurant for probably the better part of 10 or 12 years. And there's nothing that brings you to Washington, Virginia. But we got as close as we could and we were staying for a few days in Washington, D.C. and thought we would do an excursion to, to enjoy this fantastic restaurant. And we are very glad we made the trip. It had to be, I think, we don't, don't even question this, the best meal that we've both ever had in North America. It was. It was the finest meal. It is a Relayan Chateau Inn, a very small inn, in Washington, Virginia, which is a teeny tiny town. And when you say you're in the middle of nowhere, you're in the middle of nowhere. You drive out of D.C. into the more farmland part of Virginia, and you're driving and driving, and there's nothing on the sides of the roads. And you turn off all of a sudden, and there's this teeny tiny, and I mean teeny tiny town, and this is pretty much the only thing there, this beautiful inn. It was actually laid out by George Washington. So a lot of people consider Washington, Virginia, the original Washington, you know, not Washington, D.C. So it really has some old charm that goes back. And when you look in the distance, you can see the Blue Ridge Mountains, which is spectacular, but farmland is so far. The yeah, eye can't see anything else but, but, but corn and grass and cows is just magnificent but really you get no cell phone reception at all there it's that far out where they warn you before you go to the restaurant that your cell phones they're not going to work and that's a good thing because it gives you time to savor the most the finest meal we have ever had from the food to the the rooms there to the service which just was unrivaled with anything and we've eaten at some Pretty nice restaurants here uh, in the United States. We've been to the French Laundry, we've been to Per Se, we've eaten at Danielle, we've eaten at, at some very fine restaurants. This, to yeah. us, it struck us, it really hit us, both of us in exactly the right way. And the interior is just spectacular. It's beautiful, it's charming. And it completely, in my opinion, especially when we went into the back room overlooking the garden, it completely reflects the personality of the owner chef, uh, Patrick O'Connell, in my opinion. Yeah, the, we, it was explained to us that each of these little rooms at the inn on the first floor, the parlor and the different dining rooms, are designed by someone from London who they call a set designer. And that's essentially what it is. You feel, you get very different feelings in each room and they're decorated to the hilt really beautifully. Um, Patrick O'Connell, the chef, who was not in the restaurant the night we were there, he, he cooks there five nights a week. He happened to have been doing a fundraiser in Washington, D.C. that night, a private fundraiser. So we missed him, but his kitchen carried out this dinner to a T. Amazing. He moved uh, and bought this property 20 some odd years ago, maybe 20 22, 20, uh, something Somewhere. like that. And it was a gas station when he bought it, and he wanted to develop it into an inn. There was no one, there was no place to get food. The only thing that you could get was milk delivered from the, the dairy farms there. So what he has done over the years is developed relationships with farmers in the area to grow amazing, amazing produce for him and, and raise sustainable, um, sustainable meats and that's what he uses. He also has a beautiful garden at the inn. It's called the Garden of Eaton and they, they pull things every day so everything is super fresh. It's su sustainable, organically raised and the food is spectacular. Well really it, you'd have to say it was the first farm to table. That's um, right. restaurant in the, in the United States. He started the farm to table, to table movement. movement. They told us that in mushroom season, the farmers come in carrying armloads of morels. Morels, yeah. Just, just they can't even use them. He, they, they said they come in during service sometimes with these huge baskets of morels. So let's take them on a journey. First, we had been seated in one room, which was very nice, but there were people next to us and people behind us and we really wanted some quiet. 
um, and enjoy the evening. So I got up and asked if we could move, and um, they moved us to this back room, this charming room, and the room had from the ceiling lin linens that came down like this straight fabric, fabric. And a fabric ceiling a gathered fabric ceiling and it overlooked there were three sets of french doors that overlooked the beautiful courtyard garden that we i went to we went to after dinner and got to experience it's it's spectacular and we sat um next to each other looking out which was nice and then the service the everybody who started off was so charming, so friendly, so personal, so warm. That was so well, well, they greeted the big, beautifully. Yeah, that was one of the big differences. There was zero pretension, zero. And that, I think, for me, was the difference between dining there and dining at the more sophisticated restaurants in New York, where there's, there's just an air of. Um, there's an eliteness, I think, among servers and between servers and diners. And, um, there was nothing between us and the servers. They were, couldn't have been more charming, telling us about themselves, about their lives, asking about where we had come from and what we were doing and what we liked, uh, telling us about the restaurant, telling us about the area. And so when you make a connection with your server that you're going to be working with for the entire evening, it makes for just a Real, a truly delightful evening from all aspects. Well, we were dining in Patrick O'Connell's home, and, and it wasn't just a restaurant; it was a home. It was, it was, and every one of the people that worked for him were his family, and they were welcoming us to their home and telling us about themselves, and and their lives, and about how the food uh, was prepared, and about wines, and just everything in life you wanted. It was just it was having a conversation with a nice person besides having the meals so well. So we started off with the, we did the tasting menu. Like we did we the did. tasting menu. It's called the Gastronauts menu, and it's a 10 course tasting. We did not do the pairings for this meal. We have actually been dieting. Yeah. Which has been, um, it's been successful and, and not too bad, but this was the big splurge. And we said, if we're gonna splurge on the food, we're gonna keep it, really hold back a little bit with the wine. So right. for the whole 10 courses, we had a half bottle of St. Julienne, 2005 St. Julienne, and we made every sip count. It was perfect pairing with everything in there, but don't forget, I had to drive an hour and 45 minutes home late, and right. I wasn't going to drink a whole bottle of wine. Right, but... great choice. Um, we're not going to go through the whole menu, the whole 10 courses, but we'll just give you a couple of highlights, starting with the first course. Truffle popcorn. The popcorn didn't have truffle oil on it. Not truffle oil, truffle. Truffle, he shaved well, truffles on it. He shaved truffles, shaved truffles on popcorn. What would be bad about that? I just wanted to drink the little remnants of the shaved truffles at the end of the box. It wasn't the most polite <laughs> thing on my part, but oh, it was so good. Um, followed by a shot of Craig Claiborne tomato soup that was extraordinary. It was creamy and very tomatoey sweet. Um, I have to look up that recipe. If I find it, I'll post it someplace because it's got to be an old classic recipe, but it was delicious. My favorite course was the final savory course, and it was braised veal cheek on a salad of summer vegetables from the Garden, the garden of Eden at the inn. And the, the veal cheek was tender and in a very rich veal demi-gloss that had been braised. So it had a just a, an unctuous deliciousness to it. It went great it. with the wine too. It went great with the wine and the, the vegetables, the salad greens that were with it were heavenly, Fr picked fresh that morning. And I, I said to you, this was possibly the best dish I ever had. It was, it was really good. And the joke about this dish was they actually served a serrated knife with this course. And you didn't need a, a serrated knife, you needed any you knife. Needed All you knife. needed was your fork and it just melted. It was So that, it was funny. Well, and, and they laugh when they serve when they give yeah. you the serrated knife because you can eat it literally with a spoon. It was so beautifully balanced. Um, and it, the the it was the perfect bite. I it just great. loved that. And then I had this cherry tart for dessert. Fresh cherries that were picked. Sour cherries. 
They were sour cherries. Sour cherries, yeah. On a crunchy dough. Oh my god. That the waiter told us the pastry chef had learned the recipe for this dough from Jacques Pepin. Yeah. That it was a very special recipe and it was crunchy, it was buttery, and then had like a sugar coating to it almost, which amazingly Please. balanced the sour cherries. It was the best dessert it, I've ever it had. It was. It wasn't the actual dessert on the menu. The, on the menu, I got the dessert that came on the tasting menu and it was a chocolate menage a trois. It was chocolate creme brulee, chocolate souffle, and chocolate mousse, a chocolate, um, chocolate mousse bomb. And it was not overly sweet, which is one of the things that turns me off in a chocolate dessert when you can't taste the chocolate and when you left, you're left with this cloying taste in your mouth. This was perfect, but the cherry tart was over the top. It was worth every was bite of breaking the diet to take spoonfuls of this. It was just fantastic. It was great. So then in between, we went out to the garden and there's a koi pond outside and on top of the garage, there's a, there's a umbrella like Mary Poppins on top of the garage next door, which is all lit up with little, little white lights up the side. Just absolutely gorgeous gardens outside. And <clears throat> we were invited to go back to the kitchen and they opened this set of grand doors. And then there's another set of doors behind and that. Through the second set. And, and if you've been in a restaurant kitchen before, you have in your head an image of what you're going to see. And when they opened the second set of doors, it was as if... Wait, wait, wait. Wait. It was as if going into the Emerald City. It was, wasn't it? It was as if angels were flying above us, floating above us, and it went... No, I thought it was like going, like like Dorothy going into Emerald City. It was the most spectacular thing you've ever seen in your life. First, you walk in and all the Jane Beards Awards and all the other prestigious medals that he's won and other things like that are on the wall to the right and on the left. And then you open it up and you've never seen a kitchen like this. I don't care what restaurant, what best restaurant you've ever been in. You've never seen a kitchen like this in your entire life. It was spectacular. The ranges are custom mm -hmm. ranges. There's beautiful copper trim. The walls are Portuguese tiles, painted mm -hmm. Portuguese tiles. There is a separate pastry station in, a, in another corner of the kitchen. There is an area with two tables and a magnificent giant hearth yeah. to, to eat in the I kitchen, to do, to do the chef's tables in the kitchen, which would that's be the next, that an next amazing time treat. we're going to do that. You could, they were, they were cleaning up, um, at that time, wiping down the kitchen, but you could literally eat off the floor of the kitchen, mm. off the counters, off of, it was meticulous and beautiful. And the music, the music, what was the music? It was, it was like, monks, it, was like it was like chants. Yeah like monastery chants, which I don't know if that's typical for that kitchen or if that night they just felt like chilling out while they were cleaning up. It was a very, very um, uh, sensual experience from every aspect. If you're a foodie and you have no tie downs, like children, things like that, you would want to quit your job and beg to work in that kitchen. I begged to clean dishes, begged to be on the line, begged to be there. It, it was that spectacular. And then my other highlight, which was really cool, was when you went into the monkey lounge and then you go into the bathroom, there's pictures of Patrick O'Connell with uh, Laura Bush doing a, doing a luncheon, and then the, the queen. The queen, there's a letter from the queen, a proclamation, because uh, congratulating him, or had, he, had she been to the restaurant? He cooked for her. He cooked for her. Yeah. Also, congratulations from Julia Child. A beautiful letter on his 20th anniversary from Julia Child. So you felt like you were enveloped in greatness, not only from the people who actually are there, but from the history in the past and, and the people that he has, whose lives he has touched. Um, gastronomically over the years. It, it was great. Also, we were sort of peering into uh, a, a room that looks like a closet. It had a yeah, French door yeah. as well. And we're peering in and said, oh wow, that's the wine 
cellar. It's like a, a giant closet. Somebody came by and said, go in, open the door and go in. Someone from the, from the inn, go in anywhere. They want you to feel like you're at home or you're at someone's home who is treating you very specially. And we felt it from the moment we walked in. It was just an extraordinary evening. It was fabulous. So we highly recommend if you can somehow go there and you're a foodie, you should try it. It's very romantic. The destination, not that there's a lot to anything to do in Washington, Virginia, but if you want a romantic getaway weekend, what a beautiful, place relaxing to place to be. Uh, as a take home, we got this adorable box, a cardboard cardboard box that is in the shape and of the inn. Um, you can actually see the chef waving if you look in one of the windows. Oh, kitchen window. On, out, of, out the kitchen window, you open it, it's got beautiful treats, um, baked treats, cookies and brownies and, and little pastries, which was beautiful, which unfortunately our diet had to be resumed, so we didn't get to, ha to enjoy those treats, but we did bring them home and brought the box home as a beautiful memento. And everyone in the kitchen signed our menus. We love to frame and hang menus. We call it the wall of fame um, in our home when we have a memorable meal. And it doesn't just have to be fantastic food. It has to be a total experience to land on the wall. And this tops everything that everything else that is on our wall. And there are restaurants from all over the world on the wall. But I think this was the most memorable from so many aspects. So we were very happy to have signed a signed menu that we can um, admire and, and remember forever. It was a treat. It was a treat. We then had a, a ride back to Washington, D.C., and we put the in the GPS in my car, and she decided she wanted to sightsee, apparently, along the way, and took us back through all kinds of back roads in Northern Virginia, which was very interesting. The happy result was we ended up going past the Washington Monument at midnight, and it was just an amazing way to end a very memorable evening. I don't think I'll ever forget just from sitting in that beautiful room with the drapes, draperies and, and the gathered um, fabric ceiling to the amazing food, to the beautiful welcoming warm service, to the magnificent kitchen, and then going back and getting to see the Washington Monument lighted up at midnight. And I had great company too, which was nice. It was nice to... It was nice to spend time, our first night alone um, for, the, for the first month of the summer. It's dating season for us. No kids for a few weeks. So it was, it was a fantastic date. Yeah. Great fun. So thanks so much for joining us for this webisode. Hope you're having a great summer, and we'll catch you after our next date.